If you look at the margins of the King James Bible, you see that the translators used the margins to house cross-references to other verses in the scripture, which is useful, helpful, and an aid for conferring with other verses, but also we find that there are notes of several varieties in the margin. This has now been presented in the centre column of our Bibles. If we look at the centre column, we see that there might be the kind of note that talks about a weight or a measure that gives some scientific information. This encourages us to investigate further or to look into certain matters concerning uh, just what do Bible words mean. Another kind of note you'll find from the translators of the King James Bible is that they sometimes referred to textual differences where the manuscript evidence, such as the Greek, did not in a majority of cases have certain words and so they chose to just point or highlight that to the reader and point the reader that this was a historical fact. Does that cause us to doubt the Word of God? No, because we understand that the King James Bible translators were choosing out of a variety of information reconstructing what was originally inspired and 100% correct in their English version. Some of the notes, and, and quite a few of them, refer to the word Hebrew or the word Greek or the word Chaldean, and you see that at the front of the note, and then you see what the note says, and it will be giving a literal or particular meaning in that language, which has been presented in English in the margin, or center column, and that is designed to show this is literally what that word might mean, nevertheless, we understand that the actual sense of the original words or wordings to render that properly into English shouldn't be literally interpreted but should be interpreted to give the sense which may not, may not be literal but is the actual intended sense of what was uh, originally written. Also there are occasions where the word or appears and then you see in the margin some other words after the word or in, in the center column as it's now presented. Now the reason for, for these uh, types of notes is, as they say, reasons moving us to set diversity of senses in the margin where there is great probability for each. That they looked at a word in the Hebrew language and they didn't 100% agree all the time or at every place because the translators translated by consensus, they didn't 100% agree among themselves what should this word mean, or they saw that there was some probability for one way or another way. And so what they did is, in their collective judgment, they decided which one would be correct. Now what they might have done is saw, well, St. Augustine said this, or so-and-so said that, or this commentary said this, or this ancient translation translated that way and gave that sense. And whatever way had the more weight behind it, whatever the rendering was that was better attested to or had the better uh, probability of correctness, they chose to be the text as it would stand, that is to say the English text as it would stand, or that is to say the correct translation, particularly or, or specifically the exact sense of what was being originally communicated or conveyed in the original language. And there are on occasions where the diversity can be quite wide between what is placed in the main text and what is placed in, as now is seen, in the center column. And sometimes the meaning is close, where there's only a slight difference. However, we know that God's word is one and true, and we also see because of the gathering process out of history and the uh, purification of the word in, in successive translations in English, that they were refining and getting it exactly right in their King James Bible translation better than, or as they said, producing one more exact translation of the Holy Scriptures into the English tongue. So one more exact translation of the Holy Scriptures means one more finalized exact, which means it's, it's accurate, in fact we believe it's perfect, and it's of course the Holy Scriptures in English it's matching directly and exactly what was originally inspired. Now what was originally inspired was soon scattered among many copies 
and you find that in history there are lots of uh, attestation to scripture, whether it's through manuscript copies or through uh, different citations in, in other writings or uh, different use in, in church copies or whatever, you see that there's going to be some varieties in the text. Also, you see, if you look at different translations and commentaries, there's variety in uh, translation or interpretation, which comes into this area of the sense. What does the original word actually mean? And what uh, is the interpretation or the conveying of it exactly in English? What is the exact sense? And so, because there were sometimes choices, they decided between what they thought was the most correct, that is, having the greater probability to stand as their main English text, and what, whilst having great probability, was not so probable as being in the margin. Now the modern version type view is to say that all uh, various presentations are equally valid and that none can be perfect. But the, and therefore they look at, at uh, the, the margins or the center column and the main text of the King James Bible and say well you can either pick and choose or both are just as much as good as each other because after all no one can get perfect. This really defies the whole notion of God and the scripture which is talking about you know living by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God or that every word of God is pure that God's works are perfect and things like that it defies that idea because it says that error is paramount it says that no man can get it correct God's word cannot be gathered into a final form it's just impossible they say but it is possible because God actually promised it you know, he even told us to seek you out of the book of the Lord and read. He told us that God gave the word, Psalm 68, 11. I mean, if it's supposed to be incorruptible seed, then it's supposed to be available in the latter days. Now, we know that not always was there an incorruptible version and translation. However, there were still good ones. Nevertheless, God has been able to, in history, and we believe this was accomplished in 1611, get his word perfectly, perfectly true and right into one Bible version and a correct translation. Now they talk about the reason why they presented sometimes these uh, diverse senses in their margin. Why did they do that? Well they wanted people to investigate. Not to say, well I think the King James Bible is wrong and therefore I'm going to prove it by uh, finding that the margin note is, is superior to the translator's text. No, the reason is because the translators believe they got it right. And you can see from their own uh, writings that they believe we, uh, through our learning, through our studies, through recognizing divine providence and bringing the right people together at the right place at the right time with the right materials, all these things have worked together and we recognize that today historically and that since that time there's been an attestation through the church of the much use of the King James Bible, the vindication of the translator's work, to see that, yes, what they presented as the King James Bible, what they presented as their main English text, what they presented as a perfect uh, version text, what they presented as a gathered together text there, and what they presented as a correct translation, sense for sense, is entirely true. It's, it's infallible. It's right. It's perfect. It's accurate. It's exact.